Hey guys, we are going to be looking at another replay review. In this case, we're going to be looking at ETD. Uh, one thing I will mention, I have pre-watched this one. I actually recorded a, a coaching video for this one earlier and um, ended up going kind of long, went about an hour long. So I wanted to make it a little bit more concise, just mention a few different areas and clean up things a little bit. The first thing I want to mention is the build. Um, you go kind of an older build on ETC, and that's perfectly fine. You take prog rock, you go into the, the loudspeaker package, right? You get loudspeakers, but then you end up going into echo pedal. Um, what I mean by the, the loudspeaker package, if people don't know, loudspeaker plus mic check um, allows you to hit multiple people very easily, um, and you have a really low cooldown. It's great if you need to like peel off frontliners that are always diving your backline because you hit two of them and you can keep them away forever. So if they ever have two divers, mic check makes it almost impossible to dive your backline. Combine that with something like block party, and your backline will likely never die. Um, that being said, you end up taking echo pedal. Now, there are a few reasons why you take echo pedal over pinball wizard. One, in competitive, if you need to slide on a target, um, if you need to be able to double soak and slide on a target without using your W, then Echo Pedal is a great way to do it. Hammer-on's more damage, but you lose the potential of double soaking. Where Echo Pedal, you can double soak and you can slide without using your W. That's in competitive and coordinated play where everyone's doing exactly what they're supposed to do. This is a lot less valuable when you're in a random game like this. It's better to have more of a punch yourself, which Echo Pedal really isn't. During a fight, it's equivalent to about 40 damage to a hero, which really isn't that much. Maybe a little bit more if you plan out everything well, you throw in a guitar solo, potentially a face melt, you're adding maybe 100 damage, where Pinball Wizard is going to be the equivalent of 140 damage right away. Um, it's just faster, burstier damage that's just much more effective. Or Hammer On, 35% more damage on an auto attack, you get three auto attacks, that's 100 extra damage. So they all can equate to about the same amount of damage. One's just instant, gives no time for healing, gives no time for anything else, and the others require a bit of timing. That being said, if you are going to be sliding and having your team follow up with a lot of abilities before you do your W, Pinball Wizard will lose a lot of value. But the fun part about Pinball Wizard is if you catch someone at like 30% health, you can just pop them yourself. Slide, auto attack, W, auto attack. You kill almost any hero at 30% or less health outside of maybe like tanks or bruisers. So of their team, you kill Asmodan, Stukov, Falstad, anytime you catch them at 30% health. And the play style I'm going to be teaching as well um, this is the play style I think everyone can learn from, which is why I'm uh, recording the, to publish this video on my channel, is because I think everyone can learn from this play style. The play style I recommend people play with ETC in the early to mid game is double soak. You double soak and you look for picks. So if you have a, an ally that's covering this lane and you've got, you're covering mid lane, you're going to wipe mid lane, you're going to mount up and you're going to run over here. And while your uh, allies um fighting you might ping the target so your ally attacks them more and takes a trade that they probably will lose um and forces the enemy to kind of stay and fight a little bit longer and you're going to sneak right up and then you're going to slide and pop them instantly with that pinball wizard slide auto w auto you could even show up from behind them auto attack a couple times if they've got an escape they might try to use that escape um and then you just you just slide on them uh and then again auto w auto and you'll take out a target because it's it's a lot of damage if you actually add it up um your slides 109 damage your w is going to be that crit right of um it'll be 200 and what is it oh it's four times damage so um it's 71 times four so it's 280 damage right um so 280 damage here uh, two auto attacks is going to be an extra 200 damage. So we have um, about 300 from your auto or from your Q, your W, and then we have 500. So you have 500 damage. Your hero ETC has 2,000 health at, at this level, which that means that you would be doing effectively um, anywhere between a third and a fourth of an ETC's health. So you're doing almost half of like a Stu cover of Falstad's health, right? That's how strong this this combo is and why I love Pinball Wizard when I'm playing outside of a coordinated environment. Within a coordinated environment, every slide should be a kill regardless of Pinball Wizard. So some people, if they really need that extra damage, they'll go Hammer On or Echo Pedal because it kind of does the same thing. With both Pinball Wizard and Echo Pedal, you can double soak. With Echo Pedal, people generally do E, 
auto attack the back line a few times w and that's usually all you need to to double soak with pinball wizard it's auto attack six times and then do the the from the back to the front and then do a w and it wipes the wave um both of them can double soak very effectively from level seven on and both of them should be double soaking from level seven on um level 10 your next decision that you want to be making so your two decisions that you make if your main tanking is etc is prog rock or block party and mosh pit or stage dive there are other variations of different builds along the way, but I generally don't recommend them until you've um, played for a lot longer on ETC and you know when to change things up. Um, I know you're returning from the game after about three years. So guys in the comments, be a little understanding that this player has, has been away from the game for about three years and come ba coming back. So um, keep that in mind while you're, you're commenting. A lot of the um, people I'm coaching are going to be viewing these relatively early on in the video, so, so be respectful. Um, so those are the two major decisions you want to make. Uh, first, we want to look block party or prog rock. Well, let's look at their their team. We have Falstad, who's primarily spell damage, but his auto attacks can be pretty scary. So we might want to wait before taking our level one until we see what talent he takes. Varian, we also want to see what talent he's taking. His auto attacks can be pretty hefty. Lion's Maw is the least scary one we want to worry about. Um, and then uh, the rest of them, we really won't know until much later. But we can at least hold this until we see what Faustad takes. If he takes auto attack, we probably want to go block party. And if he takes um, any like W or Q, then we're safe to go prog rock. And so we'll fast forward a little bit. We can see he took W. So we would be safe to take prog rock this game. So we also want to double soak to get that earlier. First thing, you slide on to Asmodan. Your team is not nearby, but he is getting close to spear range. So this is another situation where I probably wouldn't use W yet. I would heal myself because I'm about to take some tower shots. And I would probably throw in a couple auto attacks and maybe even try to body block a little bit. But overall, this is a really bold slide where your team just isn't ready for it. I have four rules when I CC a target. And you're going to hear these four rules all the time. Is it a target your team's already attacking? If you CC a target, of teams you're, you're a target that your team's already attacking, you're giving them more time to attack that target safely. That is the number one rule and the most important CC that you can do is CCing a target your team is already attacking. Number two, will it secure a kill? And number three, and that, that means like, again, we're in this build where you can do about 30 to 40% of someone's health. So if they're at 30% health, you know your slide's gonna lead to a kill. So it's okay to use your slide or your CC in those scenarios. Number three, this is the third rule. Will it save an ally? CCing for peeling is, is also incredibly strong. And number four, will it interrupt an important ability? Not just any ability, it needs to be an important ability. It needs to be more important than your CC. So for example, if you interrupt like a uh, Asmodan's laser, but you could have used that Q to lead to a kill. It would have been better to use that kill or that that Q to lead to a kill than it is to interrupt the laser. So um, those are the four rules of using CC. For the rest of this game, you're going to be making this mistake a lot, and I'm just going to refer to them as the four rules. Um, with ETC, always make sure when you're sliding targets to give your team time to interact with them first. Usually, I like to give them at least an auto attack amount of time. Slide, auto attack, see what your team's doing. If they're not doing anything, W, auto attack. Okay, that's how every play should go. So right here, um, we see all the abilities go off and we see that you W, which ends up pushing him and he gets out of the stun early. So he, he didn't get hit by the, the Tronda stun because of your knockback and he got out of the Imperius stun early because of your knockback. Because they have to stay on the spear during the knockback. That was a good good kill. Generally, sliding targets that your team's attacking is good. You go up here to catch the soak. Early kills are, are worth less than a wave of soak. And I'm going to show you how bad this actually is. I want you to see this really quick. So, minions. He just pushed that wave of minions before you guys did. And he got 500 experience. Um, where you got this kill and you got 303. So, or you got 480 anyways that, that your team didn't get, right? Because Leoric was up here while you guys were down there. He got 480 extra experience that you guys didn't get, where you guys got that, that kill experience, which is 303. 
Waves of Soak early in the game, um, all the way up to level 7, are worth more than kills. So it's better to just get Soak, make sure you're soaking all lanes. Once you get 7, kills become equivalent to Waves of Soak. So that's it. Now on, on two lane maps, um, it doesn't become equivalent until later because they're worth a little bit more experience. But on three lane maps anyways, it's better to try to double soak if possible than it is to look for kills. On two lane maps, it's, I mean, you're generally going to be getting soak while you're looking for kills. So it's perfectly fine. Um, but I just really wanted to share that because it's a lot of soak. Now you do catch most of it. You can see this one timed out and this one timed out. You missed two minions worth of soak, actually three, because there was a third one right there. You missed three minions worth of soak. You grab the experience and we can see in total, the enemies are still ahead because of a lot of soak, um, a lot of minion soak. So try to grab as much soak as possible. Now, the next thing you do for the next few minutes here is you burn a lot of mana trying to kill Leoric. You don't really have a chance of killing Leoric. There is a soul lane ETC build that I do recommend um, to anyone who wants to like bully an enemy laner, solo bosses, and join team fights with a bang. Um, and that's the auto attack with Guitar Hero into Speed Metal, into Hammer On, into um, Stage Dive as well as potentially like face melt and aggressive shredding. Like this allows you to stick to targets really easily and drop them very quickly with high damage auto attacks. You can also solo bosses. So one of my favorite things to do is start soloing a boss and watching a team fight. So say an objective is about to spawn, instead of, I'll, I'll make it look like I'm backing and then I'll just go to like a boss and then I'll start soloing the boss. All the enemies are gonna go to the objective. My team's gonna go to the objective. And my team's gonna fight a 4v5. But sometimes your team wins those early 4v5s. And if they're going to win that early 4v5, you get an objective and a boss. And if they're starting to struggle in that 4v5, you can use your stage dive to join the team fight, and you don't really lose very much because you can solo a boss without really using a lot of health or mana because all you're using is guitar solo, which is a low mana cost, and that heals for enough to keep you up. And if you're heavily losing the objective, you can just take the boss as a trade for losing that objective because you joining the fight probably wouldn't have made a difference. So it's a really effective strategy and I've used it to um, overwhelm enemies really early on in games because it's a low risk to take. Um, if, you, if you're going for a boss while the enemies are on objective, if they see you doing the boss, you just walk away and you just ult to join the objective and now you make it a 5v4 and you win the fight. Um, and you win the objective. If the enemies decide to all go there, then you're halfway done with that boss by the time you might even need to stage dive in. And you could just stage dive in and, and lead to a kill or two. Um, I love this playstyle of ETC. That being said, it struggles with double soaking. So that's where one of its issues are. So you spend the first, I would say, two or three minutes of this game just burning mana. And you really don't need to be burning this much mana. Um, so just keep that in mind whenever you are playing ETC. Um, if you can't lead to a kill, it's not worth the mana to try because you could save that mana for something else. So again, use your Q to dodge that. You could have just dodged it by walking away. And... Uh, you're at half mana. I would recommend hitting a fountain earlier than later. If you hit a fountain now, it'll get you back up to full mana. Um, and then you'll have the, the fountain during the objective. But if you wait a minute and you get a fountain in a minute, you won't have the fountain during the objective. And it's likely not going to give you enough mana. You're probably still going to have to back anyways. So I would be using less mana and I would probably grab a fountain right now. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Um, but yeah, I would say that's the, the biggest thing. We're going to fast forward a little bit because I have paused quite a bit. You can see you're just burning a lot of mana. You end up getting a fountain around 2... I think it was like 2.15ish. And I want to point out something about fountains. Fountains only give you like 40% of your mana. This is only going to get you to about 50. So um, slide, grab a fountain... And it's at 218, so you won't have a fountain for the objective, and you still won't lead to this kill on Leoric. So you've burned your entire mana bar to not kill Leoric, to not double soak, and you burned a fountain that you won't have during the objective. The objective spawning, you should be backing right away. You want to be this objective with full health, full mana, but you have no mana for this next objective. So you need to be backing right away. You slid to grab a a globe, and you did get some damage off on him, but you have no method to get to him. Speed metal, you might have been able to get to him fast enough, but 
again, the kills early game aren't really worth that much. So if you miss a kill because you have one wrong talent, but that wrong talent ends up leading the more value late game, then it's better to have it late game. Um, now you're backing during the objective instead of before the objective, and you're going to miss the first half of the middle objective and the first half of the top objective because of this mistake. So, early game. Conserve mana. When you get to seven, double soak. Um, those are your two big mistakes that you've already made that's made a significant difference in this game already. Your team is able to get this bottom objective, but you already missed a few of the shots, and your, your uh, top objective you're just losing. So overall, it's going to be a net loss for this objective. That's okay, though, because early game is not the end of the world, and you guys have the kills to compensate for a lot of the experience difference. This game, you decide to take Echo Petal. I recommend Pinball Wizard in solo queue games. I just feel it has more opportunities for outplays. Um, and where Echo Petal gives one major advantage is doing Mercenary Camps over Pinball Wizard. I find that Mercenary Camps are generally not going to be something you can easily do on a tank because you're going to be holding a lane. And if you go to do a camp, you're probably going to be missing experience. So, at level 7, you want to be double soaking. Ignore this dude. You don't care about this dude, right? He, he can't kill you either. You can't kill him, and he can't kill you. So, you should go up here, clear the lane, and then you should mount up, grab vision, and then go down here and catch this lane, and then you should mount up, and he'll probably try to get vision back. You can get vision again, or you can just double, sh double soak and ignore the vision, and you're going to be giving your team a really good experience advantage or at least opening up the map to where they can do camps while you're getting double soap. Um as it stands though you can't kill him but you don't need to kill him um this is fine you didn't need to slide away but that's okay again you just need to clear the minions so i recommend always attacking the backline minions when you're trying to clear a lane and I'll show you guys in a recording afterwards. Um, a, uh, I'll go in try mode and I'll show you a few things in try mode. But yeah, you're, you're spending way too long. <clears throat> spending way too long in these lanes. Same thing. It's just a ton of auto attacking. You have echo pedal. You need to be using this to get value out of it. If not, it's not worth it. Because six auto attacks. One, two, three, four, five, six. You slide through all of these. W, the whole lane dies. Or at least takes a significant amount of damage. You could even probably leave these guys up. You could probably just six auto attacks here, slide down this way, walk back up W and the whole wave dies. And then you can mount up and leave. Um, but you, you've got to get faster. And if you're going to do echo pedal, you got to at least press E in lane to trigger echo pedal. E, six auto attacks, W, the lane dies, okay? But you're focusing so heavily on kills and you're not playing a hero that can kill these. The only way you get kills this game is if you get picks that people aren't expecting. You do have an experience lead during this next objective, so what should you do? Next objective spawning, be backing, have full health, full mana, and a fountain available for the next objective. Instead, you go for a kill that you can't get. You're going to burn a lot of mana, and you won't have um, your fountain available. So the level 10 lead that you had is lost, right? Um, and the objective, I mean, they, they would have hit 10 by the objective, but... Um, the objective spawning, and what are you going to have to do again? You're going to have to back at the start of the objective. And so the enemies are going to win the first half of the objective again. Now, you decided not to back. You were able to defend the first half of the objective. Your team was able to get a kill on Asmodan, which is great, but you're running out of mana. Always mount up, yep, and get back in there. Good fountain. In this case, the fountain tended to be pretty good. One big rule about Mosh, um, unless people are like stunned or are locked in some situation where they can't get out, um, generally don't do a dry Mosh Pit. What a dry Mosh Pit is, is it's a cast time of one second or a little, a little less than one second, um, 0.75 seconds. You want to power slide Mosh Pit. I know you've been out for three years, probably something that you just... Um, your muscle memory lost it. Also right there, you stepped back in. The last two shots, so when it has these five on the top and two shots left, you can leave. Um, it, you'll take less damage, you'll burn less mana, um, because it'll take more than, it takes 2.5 seconds for this thing to roll all the way down. 
So that means you get two shots and 0.5 seconds. It'll pause and fire off the last five. So right at that last two shots right there, you can always leave, saves you some time. You made that mistake up top as well. Um, not a big deal, but again, faster you can get um, away, the, the less damage you take, the less mana you spend, and also the more value. This right here with Pinball Wizard likely would have been a kill, um, but not a big deal. Pinball Wizard is a lot of damage. I don't remember if I added it up in this video or the other video, but it's like a fourth of your health. You should just leave. Go get Soak in this lane in this lane. Your team's already lost like this this thing. If all five decide to fight here, you guys don't have a lot to defend. They decided to leave, so you guys leave. Get some soak. Oh, again, four rules. Um, you slid on targets, and, and I was fast forwarding, but I remember this fight. You slid on targets before your team was there. Um, it, you didn't follow the four rules, and you died because of it. Four rules of CC. Unless you're in coordinated play. If you're in coordinated play, you can throw a CC out from a mile away and your team will find a way to get there because you know what your team has, right? Say you've got a Genji on your team. You can throw a stun from a long distance because you know that Genji's gonna have your back. He's gonna dive in and you, and you know how much damage he's capable of because he's a competitive player. Um, but if you've got a random Genji on your team or you've got a uh, Li Ming that doesn't know like her ranges very well or you don't know Li Ming's ranges very well, it's better to follow those four rules than it is to try to uh, try to make some crazy plays. Level 13, Encore is probably what you want to go this game. Um, it has been nerfed a little bit, but it's still really good. What Encore does, it's going to lower the cooldown of your ult. Um, and against their team, they only have two Mosh interrupts, right? So um, we see Gust and we see uh, Sukov has two. So if you mosh Stukov, all they have left is Gust. If Gust is used and you mosh Stukov, everyone else that you mosh um, is going to be stuck in there. So this is what like a coordinated play from a mile away would look like uh, if, if they were just a, a tad bit better in this scenario. Um, this would have led to a kill. For example, if he didn't go Lion's Maw, but instead he went um, Overpower, they would have killed this Li Ming from this far away, and it would have been a target that no one was attacking. But um, he doesn't lead to that kill. He got really close. Um, that's why I said like one talent difference and they would have gotten it. A couple more stacks on Asmodee would have gotten it. That was a great mosh as a counter engage. We knew that Falstad wasn't there yet. Um, and you had a mosh on the one person with a uh, mosh interrupt. Great. So overall, you played this well. And this is exactly when you want to be using mosh, right? You want to be using mosh to... Um, to grab the Stukov or grab the Falstad. If the Stukov's dead or not there, you're going to grab the Falstad. Right here, again, they got a good majority of the objective. This is where kind of the problems coming in. It's just um, you guys are always missing the first half of every objective because when the, these objectives are spawning, you have other priorities. You're, you're looking for kills instead of objective. Even though you're getting those kills, you're losing so many structures. And where you guys are up in, in kills and, and even in experience for most of the game, it's the structures that are going to end up costing you the game, especially on a map like Sky Temple, where when it gets late game, if you're out of structures, you can't lose even a single objective. Where there are some maps where you can get away with losing an objective or two late game, and if you don't have structures, it's not a big deal. Like Curses on Cursed Hollow. If you lose uh, an objective there, it's not a big deal if you don't have a lot of structures because it's just going to turn off structures. But on a map like this, if there's a, an objective top and objective bot, you have no structures left, then the enemies just win the game. Nothing you can do about it. So it was a good call. You knew the enemies were going top. You got a kill. You got boss for free. You also had a camp bot. Um, now it's just clearing up things, trying to get 16s. In coordinated play, there might be a situation where you guys try to like push for a keep top or get some structure damage. Um, you coordinate who would deal with this down here. It generally wouldn't be an ETC. Um, but yeah, against their team, I would probably go Encore because they have a bunch of people that you'd hit with your W, right? You'd be hitting the uh, the Asmodee most likely, the Leoric, and the um, <clears throat> the Varian most of the times so you'd be using your W. So you'd be shaving off 15 to, <clears throat> I would say like 15 to 20% every time you do your W. And 15 to 20% of your mosh, but every W would, would definitely shave off quite a bit. 
and you'd be able to mosh every 90 seconds or so, which would be really strong. Every 90 seconds, um, having a mosh against this team would be pretty huge. So I would say that's your probably third mistake this game. Um, and again, look at another target that if you slid and just waited, then he would have been stunned by the, um, the Tyrande, would have gotten hit by all the abilities from the, um, the uh, Li Ming, and the slow from the Zul'jin, then a slowed uh, Varian at 40% health likely would have died there. So, again, it kind of comes back to the same few things. The four rules, um, the just waiting to W after you slide, especially if you don't go Pinball Wizard, and um, Double Soak early to mid game. As you start reaching late game, it's just being in the right places. Quite a push. You just need to get more value out of your talents, too. You decide to go Showstopper. I will say Showstopper got a strange nerf. Um, not directly, but indirectly. What happened to Showstopper is why a lot of people took Showstopper is they would slide and then mosh pit for the extra 30 armor, right? They're the 35% armor compared to the 20%. Um, and so that's why people went Showstopper, but they actually changed your trait to give you 60 armor while you were moshing. And so you don't need Showstopper for mosh anymore. And so a lot of people are taking aggressive shredding or imposing presence. I think imposing presence is really fun because it gives you an extra slow. So say you slide on someone and you don't think it's going to be enough to kill that target, you can pop Imposing Presence. So after the slide, they're slowed by even 20% is enough to be pretty annoying. Um, and then it also slows attack speed. So if the Leorg decided to go attack speed or whatever, you can lower his attack speed by a little bit, um, which isn't bad. So I actually really like going Imposing Presence these days compared to um, Showstopper. Aggressive Shredding is also really good too. It keeps your cooldown of your E really low. Your E lasts for four seconds um, and it's a nine second cooldown. With Aggressive Shredding, you can shave the cooldown down to like a six. Pretty good. It's a good kill that you got. Um, you still have your, your Q up in four and your Mosh is up soon. We still have Guston available, so we generally don't want to be moshing here, but we could look for another kill. This would be a, a great opportunity to pop Imposing Presence. It would be slowed by 20%, giving your team time to catch up, and then you could slide on him. We know his push and his silence is off cooldown. So if you do get a mosh onto Falstad, um, all their interrupts are down. That being said, he probably has a reset on it. You can't trust it. Right there, if you had your Q and you were Pinball Wizard, Q, auto, W, he dies. Um, so it would be worth chasing a little bit longer if you had Pinball Wizard. But without Pinball Wizard, it's definitely not worth the, the chase. But that's, again, that's the reason why you take Pinball Wizard is that burst potential. You can slide people and, and take them out from really low health. You really don't need to use your Q for escapes as often as you're using it. Because if that would have landed right there, you would have needed your Q to slide past them. Better to hold it. I always say, like, treat your Q like an ultimate. Your Q stuns for as long as Varian's taunt lasts, except for yours is AoE, and it's also your mobility. So it's a really powerful ability. Crazy. I think, uh, like, ETC's Q um, and um, Misha's, Misha's stun are, like, some of the most underrated stuns in the game because of how low cooldown they are and how they compare with other ultimates. Like, Misha's stun and ETC's Q are like equivalent numbers of ultimates on like a fifth of their cooldown. Again, it's not really worth sliding in if your team can't follow. It's just a waste of time. You could have just stayed in the bush and pressed W to dismount them and then waited for your team to do anything before using Q. You guys win this objective. It's pretty good. Here's the problem. Look at your guys' structures. So even though you did win this later objective, it's all those early objectives that costed you the game. You guys even won the boss and, and had decent camps too. 
but it's just that earlier objective that costs you the game. So just always be careful about that, right? A lot of people, they feel like those earlier objectives, like they're they're pretty weak, and they kind of are these days. Games generally go late, but now you guys are always gonna have to be defending bottom, and these objectives are gaining more and more value. So just be careful about those whenever you guys are playing. So as you start getting into later objectives, I mean, your, your goal really is to heal yourself, burn as many abilities as possible, stun targets that your team's attacking, and look for moshes on these two backliners. So you guys have used a few abilities to get out, so you gotta be careful. You see he's looking for a gust. And you got a good slide, which led to a kill, right? So you guys wanna back up. He's going in though. So it's it's a tricky situation to be in. You almost want to go back in to save him. Um, this foul set's probably not going to lead to a kill on his own. He has W build, though, so he could potentially lead to that. W build kind of sucks these days, but it can still be a little tricky. Gust is going to lead to the Imperius dying kind of on his own. Can't really do anything here. Try to clear this up a little bit. Again, be careful when you're sliding just to interrupt. It is, this feels like a good play in your mind because you're getting a slide and you're interrupting an ability, but you're interrupting an ability with your escape. And it's an ability that wouldn't have killed you. That was a good mosh attempt and that was a good taunt on his part. Both of you guys played well there. It's a good mosh attempt because Stukov was just starting to cast his silence and the Varian is backing up to try to taunt you. And so if you if your mosh went off, you probably would have killed one or both of them. That's a good knockback on his part. You guys are both level 20s. The boss is available and you guys are losing top objective. Again, losing the first half of the objective. It's always the same thing. Every time that an objective is going to spawn, you should be backing, getting full health, full mana, and a fountain available for every objective. Bolt. I have kind of a, a thing about Bolt, and this is I, this is actually a, a, a rule I give to even Grandmaster. Um, I was coaching um, like HEC players and CCL players on this, and um, I have this rule, and it works. It really works. Basically, it's this. If the enemies are backline heavy, you go Bolt. If they're frontline heavy, you go Death Metal. And if they have very little CC, you go Tor Bus. Because their interrupts are both backline, you can go Bolt or Tor Bus, and that would be perfectly fine. But because it's been a little while since you've been playing this game, I would shy away from Bolt. Because Bolt, you need to have a lot of confidence, and you're likely going to be CCing targets that your team cannot reach. So I would rather you go Death Metal um, because there are at least going to be targets that your team can reach. Um, or I would rather you go Tor Bus because then you can mosh their front line and slide their back line. I, Bolt is one of those where in competitive, it's amazing and coordinated competitive play. But when you're kind of playing with random players, it's a lot harder to get value out of because let's say you Bolt past their front line, you slide and, and mosh these two heroes. Um, your team can't follow that. And so your team won't know what to do, and it'll be a wasted mosh, and a wasted bolt, and a wasted slide. So, um, that's the reason why I, shy, I recommend shying away from bolt when you're, you're playing uh, quick match. Not quick match, but uh, just like lower rank and returning. So, you gotta be proactive, you gotta get more experience for your team, and you gotta watch out for a lot of those other situations. So I did want to show you really quick, um, uh, I'll fast forward through the rest of the game for people, but um, it's it kind of just goes like a Sky Temple game. Like your team wins the team fights, but they win in just pure structures and objectives. So you guys have catapults pushing top and bottom, so now you have to send two people back instead of pushing with the objective. If you guys could have pushed with the objective, you would have been able to get a little bit more, not the objective, but the boss. You would have been able to get a little bit more value. Um, 
but you have to push without your Imperius. Because you're pushing without your Imperius, the enemies are able to win a 5v4. And because they win a 5v4, they're able to win the next objective. They win the next objective, and it closes out the game. And that's basically how this game plays out. And that's all because you weren't at those early objectives, and you were wasting too much time trying to get kills instead of getting objectives and experience. And that is how this game closes out. So I'm going to go into the replay really quick and just show you how to um, double soak with uh, both of those builds at level one. Um, so we'll go into collections, heroes, tanks, ETs. Quick try. Okay, so level seven, right? That's the level where I said you guys can start. So you want to be conservative with your mana, be at the objectives on time, full health, full mana. Um, but when you hit level seven, it doesn't matter what talents you take until level seven. Level seven, my recommendation, Pinball Wizard. One, two, three, four, five, six. You through all of them, press W, the whole wave dies. Um, you can leave. You might miss one minion of soak, and then you can go down here if you. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Slide through all of them. W. You'll get a globe, which will put your mana back up to about 90%. Regen will bring you right up to about 95%, and you do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. This angle's a little weird, and I missed one um, because it's around a turret. I didn't want to take too many shots. Um, you can throw a couple extra auto attacks, and guess what? You can go right back down here. Even if the angle's a little weird, we need to throw in a couple extra. That's how you do it. Um, so we'll throw in a couple extra auto attacks here and act like we messed up two waves. Bounce up. Guess what? Back on time. One, two, three, and this wave's actually a lot better. So we'll go like that with this one, hit the whole wave, whole wave dies, one extra auto. For good measure, and we're good. Um, that's how you double soak with Pinball Wizard. And that Leework wasn't killing you. And you're going to be getting globes every time. And you can even throw an extra E in there every time. So you can double soak around enemy heroes pretty safely. The other option. Frog Rock, Loudspeaker, Echo Pedal. You ready for this one? You're going to do Echo Pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six, W. And then you're going to walk up and just auto attack one or two more times. And you get to save your Q. So in case you need to escape, you're using your E and your W. It's a couple more auto attacks, um, but it does save you your Q. Now you can Q instead. If you would like, you can do a Q where you start at the front line and you Q to the back line, and then you're going to let it pop. Then you do your E, and potentially you could do a W if you want to. That is Echo Pedal. So both Echo Pedal and Pinball Wizard can double soak. So you should be double soaking. Now, I recommend Pinball Wizard over a lot of other things because let's say they have that uh, Asmodan on the team, right? Um, if you catch that Asmodan at, I don't know, let's say we get him to half health, right? Let's uh, reset talent. Frog Rock, Loudspeaker, Pinball. We just need to get him to half health. He's a bot, so naturally he's going to do bot things. Um, and I'm not saying you would normally be the one getting them to half health. I would be saying you're going to be double soaking this whole time, right? And if you ever catch him at half health, um, we're just going to jump on him. So you're, you're double soaking, you're doing whatever you want, and we're just smacking this guy to get him a little low. Okay, he's at half health, right? We do Q, W, and it's like you, you drop him. I mean... We did 30% of his health. So, and at half health, you can you can chase him down because you got to remember, like, he's going to have to get around you. And so if you're sliding past him, he's going to have to get around you. But if that's instead like a Stukov, who you were going against, right? Um, let's look at Stukov really quick. So just so you see what we're doing, it's Q, auto, W, auto, auto, right? 976 damage. That's a third of ETC's health. Okay, um, if we look at this, he's 2,400 health. That's like 40% of Stukov's health. So if we catch him out of position, slide, auto, 
auto. That's 40% of his health. If you ever catch a Stukov, and how many times is a Stukov in your range of your Q at 40% health? Only probably twice that game. But two times on kills that you didn't actually get because of a talent like that is, is why I recommend it. So double soaking and look for picks. You're just going to go lane to lane to lane to lane, and you're just going to get picks every time that they're staying in that lane, and you have a, a laner in there. And then when you get that, you clear that wave, your laner realizes they don't need to be there anymore. So they're either going to go do camps or they're going to push structures, and that structures is where you fell behind. So, fix those few things, and you're going to be winning a lot more games with ETC. Hopefully this helped out everyone. Thank you all for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos.